Greetings and salutations. I am Poetic Heretic, and this is one person's account of a most horrific haunting. When I first walked into the old house that was to become my home for more than 20 years, I felt an uneasy feeling that caused me to look up at the ceiling as I walked through the rooms. I felt a dangerous, evil presence as I looked up. There was something up there, and it was frightening. In one of the bedrooms, I opened the closet to find books of all sizes and descriptions. They all had the same subject matter, unsolved murders. At that moment, I began looking down at the floor feeling someone was buried beneath the old hardwood floorboards. As we came outside the house, the realtor showed us underneath. We had a pier and beam foundation which lifted the house off the ground at least six feet. Under the porch, I found old bottles and cans. It was dank and dirty, and all that I wanted to do was get out of there. As I stood in the front yard and looked up at the house, I knew that I wasn't imagining the evil spirit that lurked behind the upstairs dormer window watching me. As hard as it is to believe, I decided to buy the house anyway and take my chances with the demon within. As soon as I moved in, I knew that this spirit would be strong and that I would have to be stronger. From that moment on, it would haunt me day and night. The fear soon left me when I realized that it was helpless to harm me except psychologically. I called an uneasy truce. At times during the night when I was alone in the house, the ghost would tramp through the house, banging doors shut, opening windows, and making its presence known to me. I would call out in anger for it to leave me alone. Afterwards, there would be blessed silence for a while. I went through the ritual of sprinkling the entire house with holy water that I made from chanting the Lord's Prayer over boiling water. When I did, the spirit avoided contact for many years. When my daughter started growing up and reached her adolescence, it returned with full force, reaping energy from her young spirit. I had decided to remodel the 50-year-old house, and soon the ceilings in all of the rooms were removed and the house was open to the pitch in the roof. That night, there was a thunderous roar from above that sounded like a cattle drive. A psychic friend of mine was visiting when this occurred, and she asked me if there was anything that had not been disturbed around the house since I had moved in. I thought hard and finally came up with a large mound of fossilized rocks that were stacked in the backyard. The man who built the house was a geology professor at the local university. My friend suggested that we upset the mound with a shovel, tossing rocks as far away as we could from the house. As we did this, the activity in the house became frenzied as if our spirit was having its soul ripped apart. Afterwards, there was silence. One night, after the attic had been made into a bedroom loft for my daughter, she and a friend were awakened by a frightening and violent shaking of the bed. They ran downstairs and refused to ever enter the attic again. My daughter was thirteen at the time, and she began to change in most dramatic ways. During her childhood, we had been closer than I thought possible for a mother and daughter to be. As puberty took over, so did the spirit in the attic. It was as if she was possessed. She became a foul-mouthed, rebellious, hateful child who hated me with great passion. She proceeded to make the next five years hell on earth for me and anyone else who dared come through our door. I begged and bargained with the spirit to release her, but it was no use. At fifteen, she ran away from home. I sent her to live with her father then because I had no control over her whatsoever. Her father was afraid of her and her tantrums. She was instrumental in destroying his second marriage within months of arriving. Then she moved back home again to make my life a nightmare once again. After 21 years of coexisting with a demon, I sold the house and moved away. I could no longer fight a spirit I could not beat. I was tired and frightened and alone. For months, when I would come in at night, the spirit would wait for me behind my glass doors and stare out at me with great malevolence. As I opened the door, it would disappear, only to reappear later that night. When I invited a new man over to the house one evening, the dispossessed spirit was hard at work to scare him away for good. He was drinking heavily that night, 
so he was no match for the evil mastermind bent on destroying him. In the wee hours of the morning, I couldn't find the man, so I walked out into the garage to see him staring at the ground in great emotional distress. He had decided that he loved me, but that he was not worthy of me, so he had decided to kill himself. He had found a pistol in his car, had written the note, picked out a place away from the house to pull the trigger, and was about to drive off to his destiny. I intervened and rocked and held him until the sun rose and the spirit faded into the darkness. It wanted him dead, and it almost succeeded in taking it from him. That concludes this terrifying story. Don't forget to rate, comment, favorite, and subscribe, and thanks for watching.